Today we're going to talk more about the M and W patterns. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Hopefully everybody had a great Christmas and New Year's. Uh, if you took some time off, um, I was sort of in and out with my kids and um, on the charts, on and off. And obviously yesterday we had the flash crash. Um, lots of big movements in the markets all over the place. Lots of great opportunities. Today we're going to talk about, continue our discussion from last time about the stop hunting and the M's and W patterns. I received a huge amount of feedback from that video and I thought we'd just go the next step and kind of clarify a little bit further about the M and W types of setups. Now with these types of setups, this is um, largely intraday. Uh, I use 15 minute charts. <clears throat> Big component of our blog and the seven step daily routine for high performance traders emphasizes the uh, importance of building your mindset, bulletproofing your, your skills, your discipline, your confidence, and a winning mindset to master the markets. And I think what you'll, you'll see today is where it's so critical to develop your skills, not only in understanding what's actually happening in the markets, but also your ability to perform in live time. And some of the things that as I continue to learn and get better, and evolve as trading mastery is a journey. You never arrive. As soon as you think you arrive at, the, at one level, the market teaches you a new lesson. But today we're going to talk a bit more about the interday setups that occur generally day after day after day on almost every instrument, some better than others. And then obviously some ideal textbook setups. We talked about building your playbook in that seven step daily routine. If you haven't done so, again, just start trying to isolate your energy and your focus onto the highest pro possibility, probability type setups <clears throat> at the right times of day that are gonna potentially give you the greatest opportunity in terms of risk reward and also uh, being able to uh, narrow your screen time down maybe to sp some specific windows uh, and, and just really hone your skill set uh, around what's happening day to day with the market. So I use the 15 minute charts. Now, you know, people talk about lining up your different time frames and all that. I, I really think that you will struggle to, in Forex, to generally perform consistently when you're, when you're doing that. One of the things that I tried to do, which I've learned from some other traders, is to really simplify things so that again, we talk about this, just being able to duplicate and replicate your method day after day after day in the markets. And again, at certain times, if you can really narrow things down so that you can cookie cutter that approach based on around what the market offers you in terms of opportunities, you may find that trading is number one, less stressful. It's easier to take losses. You can have asymmetrical risk reward in your trading. Uh, but also you can, you can, I mean, I, I think trading is about having lifestyle as well as opportunities. And I know that a lot of traders out there are spending hours on the screen trying to scalp pips and everything else, which I don't question. It's just, that's not a method that I'm after. I'm trying to minimize my screen time, maximize my results and get really, really, really good at those simple setups that I look after. So 15 minute charts <clears throat> between mainly between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. New York, specifically sort of around the Europe London Open uh, and the uh, New York Open. Now, in the last video, we talked about the simple patterns that happen with consolidation, stop hunt, trends, consolidation, and closing into the U.S. session, whether that's a down market or an up market. That basic setup pretty much happens day after day after day in some way, shape, or form. may not always be a trend bar. Uh, we may see that present <clears throat> and also, uh, you know, we'll get, we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth, but what's really important <clears throat> for me is that number one, even if you're trading Asia, the best setups will usually occur at the beginning of the market. So there may be either a stop hunt or a breakout in a trade. And typically what I will look for 
is a W or an M formation outside of the Asia range. Now that said, even this morning there was a W formation that happened on the euro and pound yen crosses at the bottom of the, the, the daily low. So even though the market had only been trading for a few hours, there was still a daily high and a daily low that was already in place. And when, when I mean by that is that <clears throat> when you mark off those levels, the market makers, the banks, whoever's running the market will typically present a W pattern as a long entry and that market will tend to end usually on a, an M pattern. But when we head into the Asia closed London open, we'll typically see some sort of line of drive take off, whether it's in the Asia close or in the Europe open. Um, and that may be a long break towards the high of the session for the day, not the previous day's high or low, but the intraday high and low. These levels are also critical and we'll talk about those in a second. But typically we'll see a three thrust pattern on that chart, which could be obviously still drawn on shorter time frames, but should be recognizable on a 15 minute chart, which will then possibly capitulate in an M type formation. <clears throat> if you were looking at a stop hunt to the top side. Now again, in other videos, we've talked about looking where profit gaps have occurred from previous sessions, maybe the US or the London session, depending on how the market traded, and also the previous days high or low. Those areas are critical because those are areas where traders potentially have been in profit and then move their profit, uh, their, their stop loss to break even. Uh, and, and longer term time frame traders potentially who are swing traders have also maybe entered the market at those levels. So the market knows they are seeking orders to fill out those levels. Now in other videos, again, we've talked about, I've, I've said this, print off your charts, usually by the end of the day or the end of the week, most trades that have been profitable, unless it's a very strongly trending market, have been hit for a break even stop out or, or generally been traded back through and been stopped out completely. Whether they're at break even or a loss, I have no idea, but they're, they're where existing orders would lie. So typically that Asia range can be anywhere between 25 and 50 pips. And again, I'm sort of, I'm generalizing, I'm, I'm a bit more focused on the pound and the euro crosses, uh, but but again, this will apply to other instruments as well, but some of them may trade more, uh, they may have a, a larger range during Asia, the yen, uh, Aussie yen, CAD yen, you know, any of the yen crosses or Aussie crosses, New Zealand crosses. But again, um, you should understand potentially what their average range of movement will be. Uh, and again, targeting asymmetrical risk reward. So if you're risking 10 to get 10, if that's what the normal push is, you might want to reassess that. And, and again, why I target the pound and euro crosses into the London Open or the Europe London Open is that I feel potentially they offer 25 to 50 pips of, of movement at least uh, two, three times a week. And some, and usually at one day a week or two, they'll offer 50 to 100, depending on the setup. So Again, typically this range can be anywhere between 20 and 25 and 50. And if the average range of a the pound say is 100 or just over 100 pips, whatever that may be, I will look for this stop hunt to be, again, typically, you know, if this is 30 to 40, this may be 25 to, to 40 up here. Sometimes it may push 50, depending on, again, if there's a gap over here from the previous session, a profit gap. So, once we've had that push through and we've, we can measure that, that's when we'll look for one of these types of candle formations to present. It may be eventually eventuating in a railroad track, which would be an M pattern on a smaller time frame. It may start off with a, a reverse hammer and sometimes even a small bull hammer, reverse bull hammer, but that will be the first side of that M pattern. If you were to enter something in on the first side of that M pattern, Typically, you may have to take a larger stop loss on that trade because the market inevitably will probably stop hunt that. Whether it will get to that stop or not is another question. But often I will look to try and enter on the second side of that M pattern, either on a, again, a smaller, um, smaller narrow range candle at the top of the range. Could be a smaller hammer. It may be a, a three candle version of a railroad track or a reverse hammer. 
I'm not always the best at being patient. I'm working on that. Sometimes I'll get in on that first one and put my larger stop loss in. Uh, and the, the, the downside with that is that typically on a 15 minute chart, you're looking at 60 to 90 minutes of, of potentially of where this pattern may unfold. So you're sitting through uh, trading where you're not able to go to break even yet. And so obviously you've got to sit on that trade. Whereas, whereas ideally you may want to get in on that second leg of the M and see the trade move fairly quickly down to where you can move your stop to break even. So traders have asked, when do you break your stop to break even? Typically, if you're entering in somewhere up here, uh, I'd like to at least get to break even at the break of a new low or high, if that was a W pattern. Uh, again, those are the areas where the market has the highest potential to reverse and go in the other direction. So that's where I will go to break even. Obviously, uh, that, that takes a bit of finesse. The market occasionally will stop hunt back with a tail. Uh, so I will watch the price action if it's set up and confirms the, the trade hypothesis that I had. Again, this is an area where if I'm targeting potentially 50, 40, 50 pips down, I'm willing to take that 10 to 15 pip stop loss because that's the highest area potential for that trade setup. If I was, I try to avoid at all costs any trades that are inside of that range is I often find that those are the trades that will get chopped up, reversed, they don't make sense, and you're in the middle of a trading range. So I try to avoid that at all costs. The same types of scenarios are applied to the W pattern on the bottom of this. So if we come along at, you know, somewhere between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. New York, could be uh, 3 o'clock, 2.45, 3.30, uh, we see an engulfment, uh, a W pattern that's come off the bottom or straightaway candles that ideally tell you that the market is they're now activating the market when the candles move fairly quickly and largely I'm planning on that being a stop hunt scenario so again I'll measure you know 25 plus pips up to wherever that first leg may move to before it shows a bit of reversal and, and I'll look to the left from the previous day's price action to see if there are any other gaps uh, in terms of profit profit gaps for that to fill and then I'll look for this pattern to unfold. Now again there are other setups but we're talking about the M and W formations today. The same thing applies for the W. If the stop hunt the market opens up and the game over here if we're trading in Asia and the stop hunt is down I'll be looking for the market at some point to reverse up. If we're trading in Asia and the stop hunt is up I'll be looking for the market to trade down. Now you have to obviously look at your other uh, overall trend of the markets, your, your hourly, your four hour, however you're approaching that and apply that into your approach to the market. So if I was on a, a larger M pattern from the previous few days and I'm looking for three legs down over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as we've talked about in the other video, um, Monday, Tuesday, 80% of the time has a high possibility of being the higher or the low of the week. I will be looking to see where we're at in that three-day cycle of trading that tends to occur every week in our markets. So again, these are just the types of candle formations that I will look for. Railroad tracks above or below, a hammer, a three-bar railroad track, double pin bars, double hammers that can set up on the bottom of these W patterns. Now, we're not talking about the New York reversal. Today, we're specifically sort of talking about that Asia, London open. The other types of scenarios you may see is that the market in London may be giving us a, a lower M pattern or a higher W pattern depending on how that stop hunt occurs. This is where you need to develop the skills because the same patterns, I've been looking at these markets for years, the same, you can go back as far as you want, they show up every single day. There are some other trades like yesterday uh, we saw before the flash crash. the day before was a straightaway trade which is a continuation off of three days of rise when the market has come back hard on a reversal and then it will continue on for a second day and it doesn't give traders a lot of opportunity to get in unless they recognize it that they've got a very tight range in Asia and London and it will just continue the, a, a very hard move for a measured move down. So. M and W's, we talked about this. I've, I've said to look at getting the free course that's on the blog. 
It's a fantastic course. There's no catches. Go through the videos. Uh, it's, it's brilliant, but it'll help you to understand the overall picture about the market makers, the banks, and what's happening day to day in the markets. And what we saw with the flash crash yesterday, you know, like the Euro Yen crashing five or 600 pips and spiking down, all the major pairs had big spikes. There's no rational explanation for that other than the fact that somebody's, you know, whether it's algorithms or anything else, but there's no, no rational justification by, behind any of that movement other than the fact that the markets are completely manipulated. And unless you understand what's happening, You'll, if, you, if you really focus in on learn this information, you'll understand why 95% of retail traders, 99% of retail traders lose money. The game is completely tilted in their favor, but if you can learn to see what they're doing, you can also participate on the backs of what they're doing with the markets and hopefully profit each day. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. The M&W patterns, again, Asia range, High of the day, low of the day, previous days, highs and lows. That's where the most important areas for trade setups will occur. Everything in between can tend to chop you up, cost you money, get you frustrated, get you angry, get you acting impulsively, revenge trading, anger trading, all the things that losing traders do. How do I know this? Because I've done all those things. So stay disciplined traders, build your daily routine, Study the M&W patterns, study the candle confirmation patterns that come along with these setups. Understand your, your average daily ranges and how far these stop hunts may move. Calculate your average daily range and once you think you have a high or a low in place for, for at least the session, do your math, look at the measured moves. Typically I'll look at an M or a W pattern to do at least twice the distance of that box as a profit target. And again, first side of the M, you're probably gonna be looking at at least 20 pip stop, 20, 20, 21, 22, if they do a spike stop hunt against you. Second leg of the M should, should move fairly smoothly in your favor without a lot of retest or heat against your trade entry. So stay disciplined traders, stay focused, print off some charts, go back, draw some lines, see what you come up with. See if any of this information helps you. I love your feedback. Keep the questions coming. If you don't understand any of this or if it doesn't make sense, fire away. We're both here to get better. The more that we can help each other improve, the less likely the market makers and the banks are going to take our money. So have a great trading week. Happy New Year. Let's make 2019 your best trading year so far. And may the markets go with you. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.